So thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I, I appreciate it. It must have been for some of you a little bit of pain uh, uh, because of the, of the social events and after uh, coming for the third day is always a bit tricky. Um, I'm impressed. I'm impressed by PyCon. I'm impressed also uh, by the fact that you got uh, auspices of, of your president. I can't imagine this happening in Czech Republic. Just for those of you that know our president, you know, like, <laughs> I, I really, uh, I really admire that your president is actually uh, interested in supporting this event. Um, what I would like to speak of today is uh, a little bit about Red Hat culture and about like how we approach diversity and uh, how we are trying to keep uh, our culture uh, entertaining. Um, which is partially my job in Brno. I'm senior HR manager for Eastern Europe and uh, the majority of my uh, associates are seated in Brno. We've got ab about like 900, 900 red headers in Brno, over 1,000 in Czech Republic and uh, the rest of Eastern Europe is like 20, 40 uh, at most. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today, uh, first of all, um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of discussion and a lot of a uh, lot of interest recently in uh, diversity and inclusion initiatives. And to be honest, before I came to Red Hat, I really didn't understand like what this is about, right? Um, because I I don't know how is it in Slovakia or how is it in your countries, but this sort of like diversity and inclusion words translated to Czech, uh, they have sort of like the bad taste that it's some like, you know, like social activity, like that doesn't make really sense, that it's support of people that just, you know, like uh, don't want to integrate in the society. So I was like, okay, like what's this buzzword about? And actually coming to Red Hat, like some, for me some nine months ago, like uh, it suddenly started to have uh, quite a lot of sense. So I would like to share a piece of it with you and then maybe some practical tips or some experience from Red Hat, um, from Red Hat, like according to like what, in my opinion, are the most uh, important elements that are forming the culture in Red Hat to be inclusive and to respect like uh, diverse opinions and to benefit from that. Um, well, uh, if you have any question during the presentation, just, just jump, uh, jump in what I'm saying, like, and I will be answering that, like, straight uh, when you come up with the question. If not, I can talk, like, hours, you know, like, <laughs> so no problem. <laughs> uh, so, basically, um, what is, um, when I was, when I was firstly asked by our U.S., like, North Carolina headquarters uh, about, uh, that I shall, that I shall, uh, you know, like investigate and analyze, like whether we are really promoting the diverse and inclusive culture in Brno. Uh, I was like, like, what, what, what is it about? Like, why should I? Like, we are uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, most of our associates are Czech or Slovak. Um, and like, what, what diversity? But then I realized, okay, like. Um, it's not true that like most, of, it's true that most of our associates are Czechs or Slovaks, but we've got nearly 20% of foreigners that are neither Czech nor Slovak in Brno, which is like just quite a big number. Uh, and um, we've, got, uh, we've got a lot of, we do, I will be talking about it later on, like we do a lot of activities to attract actually women, you know, like to be inclusive for people that have like different tastes, different lifestyle, you know, like to be part of Red Hat and to feel comfortable there. And um, uh, for myself and also sometimes for our managers and for our engineers to actually understand what does Red Hat mean by diversity and inclusion, I came up like uh, with the following overview about like why diversity matters. Um, first of all, um, I was, um, first of all, like diversity is important if you have diverse clients. And if you're a software company, you're gonna always have diverse clients if you are a so global software company. And um, if you want to understand them, it's better to have among you somebody who uh, is from the same group or does have like similar preferences as the clients. 
uh, that's basically the business side of like why to promote diversity and inclusion, like one part of the business side. Um, we actually, um, in Red Hat, we had like a game about, uh, which was like a pub quiz, if you are familiar with the format that you are sitting in a pub and you have like uh, questions and you work in a team and you want to win. And basically, if you start, uh, if you start with pub quizzes, usually like people that know each other and that have similar interests tend to hang in the groups uh, and work uh, on, the, on the solution for the pub quiz, right? But then how would you select your team if you knew that there will be questions from Japan history? And you definitely want to win. So basically, like, uh, what would you do? You would probably look up for the Japanese guy that works in Red Hat for all, already two years and you never talk to him because there's high chance that he's gonna understand, so has, he's gonna have the best knowledge of, of Japanese history. And if you know there's gonna, be, there's gonna be questions in Russian, then you're probably gonna go for that, uh, for that guy like, uh, who's from Russia, who's sitting there in the corner you know, with his headphone, headphones all the time. And you know, like, so we were trying to show use this case you know to show that um if you have if you have multiple uh that in the end like it makes sense in a diverse world to have like diverse team to work with and that it's also important you know like not to hang just with your group and people you know but to maybe sometimes at some point uh have a look somewhere else and try to include somebody who's maybe sitting there like in the corner with his headphones because he doesn't speak Czech and everybody in the office speaks Czech so so he doesn't really doesn't really join the group. I will be talking a little bit later about like how we what we are doing to include expats a little bit more in the life in the office. Uh, another case for diversity and inclusion is innovation. And uh, I think that you all work in or, or are active in open source and like, you know, mixing up like globally and the possibility to exchange, exchange uh, know-how like with people that have completely diverse background and like diverse experience. That's a great source of innovation. There are issues that you're never gonna come up with like if you would, wouldn't, you know, like somebody, somebody who's maybe from, I don't know, South America or North America coming up with full load of different information than you have. Um, talent development is important part uh, for talent development. Inclusion is really important. Um, this is something that we are solving like every year with talent review, that maybe there are some people that uh, you don't consider as talent. Like I'm working a lot with our managers, so basically what I'm telling to them like, you know, not everybody is, you know, like promoting himself or herself, like, you know, it's outspoken and extrovert. You need to reach out like to everybody in your group or everybody you, with whom you are collaborating to actually find out like whether this person, like what is the talent of this person and get uh, and help to this person to use the talent. And of course, like um, if you are expanding, uh, if you are doing diversity actions, you are focusing, for instance, to attract more women into uh, into open source, or you are interested in uh, uh, attracting uh, or in including like more experts, for instance, to the developer uh, center in Brno, then you are basically expanding your talent pool and expanding the pool of potential candidates and uh, just brutally business, business style, you are expanding the workforce that can work for you. So it definitely makes also like business sense. So what's our recipe in Red Hat? Uh, there are elements of our culture that we that we are trying to actually make uh, stronger and uh, you know keep as little corporate as possible in order to be able to use fully like our uh, um, to in order to be uh, really able to to make us still preserve this feeling of like startup and community and uh, living the uh, open source way. So basically like what uh, we are asking uh, from our employees and what our employees actually ask from us is passion for open source. And it's really, if you come to Brno or if you ever visited our Brno office, that's definitely really strong. That's what most of our new hires say that they want to work for Red Hat because it's uh, because we are doing uh, software the open source way and it's really important for them and we are trying to keep it that way. Uh, also, uh, for diversity, it's important that everybody has the same mission. 
the mission is not only not only like to uh, make money, but also to change the world a little, you know, like by making the money a different way and actually contributing also to the development of the open source communities. And um, also, also like one of our recipes are our values, like courage, freedom, commitment, and accountability. Um, I came from completely different, uh, different company. Uh, before Red Hat, I was working in heavy, heavy industry, uh, heavy machinery. And I was really impressed when coming to uh, when coming to Red Hat that basically like uh, um, the company is letting people to run their own projects if they find something something that they are passionate about and that they think that would be uh, beneficial either for the open source community or beneficial for Red Hat or in the best case for both uh, they can go for that uh, and uh, like other people are just just you know like. Uh, very spontaneously volunteering for uh, to participate on this type of on these types of project projects. So uh, when I came from uh, and in my previous heavy industry company, like if you would say like please volunteers step forward, like everybody would make like a step back, you know. So basically, basically like I was I was really I was really impressed about that. Um, well. To come back a little bit about how we are promoting like diversity. Uh, if you want to work with people that are um, that are that have diverse backgrounds, diverse requirements, diverse needs, lifestyles, interests, ways of working, uh, one of the most important things for me is the flexibility that we are trying to offer to them, to actually make space for all for most of their needs. Um, so we've got, uh, um, and we are trying to keep, even though the Czech labor law is not really like in favor of this, it's more like the heavy industry style uh, labor code what we have in Czech Republic. I know in Slovak, in Slovak Republic it's just the same. So basically we are trying to keep as flexible as possible working hours. Basically uh, we don't have like any time clocks, like people need to be there like when they agreed with their manager or with their team but we are not really controlling this. Again, like big change for me uh, compared to other, uh, to other companies. Uh, we are trying to keep as flexible as possible workplace structures. So basically like there are like, uh, you know, spaces where you can work on your own, but it's mostly, but then it's mostly open space to work in a team. Uh, we are currently building in Brno Ford building, which should be even more flexible, having like small offices, enclaves, like places for teamwork. Uh, and all of this is like, you know, to cater for different needs. We've got places like, you know, for uh, our associates that don't like light, you know, daylight from some reason. So basically like we've got like some uh, shaded, uh, shaded enclaves. Um, and you know, like uh, as as long as it, this is possible, like we are trying to keep the workplace like friendly to uh, everybody. Mm. We are trying also to cater for special needs. For instance, we we are offering a, bra a broad range like of opportunities for students to work part time. Also, like for uh, mothers or fathers on maternity or parental leave, we are uh, trying to. Um, you know, offer them as much possibility uh, to stay in touch with the company as possible. So for instance, recently we started to offer to uh, mothers on maternity or parental leave uh, the possibility to at least, if they don't want to work part-time because like they want to be more with the family, which is uh, completely, completely understandable. Uh, but still they, they were looking for some way how to stay in touch with the with the very rapidly developing developing uh, world of software. So we, we are offering them the possibility to some of them to stay as mentors. So basically they work a couple of hours a week and, uh, and uh, you know, they are, if they've got experience, so they are either technical or like uh, development, talent development mentors for the, you know, recently hired, for instance, uh, guys and girls like after the university or for interns which is like, in my opinion, like really nice, nice way how to stay in touch, but not to work like standard or like at least part-time hours, like when you, when you have a baby. We also offer work from home. Usually one day a week, there are associates that are fully at home or they are more than one day, one day a week working from home. 
which is also really good. On the other hand, uh, we don't want to go for like having all the associates working from home because like uh, I've noticed that the best, craziest and sometimes like most innovative I ideas happen frequently like when you are waiting like in a line for the coffee machine, you know, in the kitchen. So basically like uh, if you have everybody working from their own kitchen, like you don't have this type of interaction. So, uh, but still like the one, two days from home, working from home is definitely something that uh, enables like a variety of people, a broader variety of people to be part of Red Hat and uh, still be able to preserve the lifestyle or the, um, the needs they have. Um, another, another thing that we, are doing, uh, that we are doing in Red Hat is a lot of education about how to be uh, more inclusive and how to actually use the opportunity that you have uh, to meet and interact with people from all over the world and with people like from diverse backgrounds. Uh, why is this important? Um, it sounds like a cliche, but uh, to be able to fully use diversity and to be inclusive, it's a skill. Like not, uh, if you are, especially if you are formed, for instance, by Czech education system, you, you, you know, like, uh, it's not educating you a lot, like, to be, like, you know, uh, to understand, um, you know, diverse culture and, you know, to get in involved, like, you know, with people from diverse backgrounds. I don't know how it's Slovak, uh, Slovak education, education system, but in Czech Republic, it's still this type of, like, command control system that the teacher is saying something and you, you know, write down the notes and then you make exam, but it's not much about like teamwork and interactions and stuff like that. So basically like that's something that uh, at least I feel like uh, is still uh, a disadvantage of, of the way how we are, uh, how we are uh, educated and uh, needs to be trained when people come to, to the Red Hat office. Um, Red Hat has something that I wanted to particularly highlight, um, and it's the open decision framework. So basically, uh, if there is like some major change happening, or if there is like, you know, like some program or strategy launched, there's usually a lot of discussion before that globally. So basically, basically like there are like, uh, any associate has the right and the possibility to actually say, uh, their own opinion to like the strategy and usually like uh, discuss discuss how it how this opinion could be incorporated or not again for me coming from a very different company this was um, at the beginning a little bit weird because I was like used like for that uh, type of military style company that like uh, the boss said something and like we were like you know we needed to start to immediately execute it was like uh, sort of this style of management, like uh, if you know the Czech uh, fairy tales, like Trautenberg, you know, like uh, I said, and you run and execute. So basically this type of, uh, this type of uh, style. And here in Red Hat, I wanted to start with a slight change of one directive. I sent the information to our burner list and I received like, you know, tons of opinions and I was like, it's, it was not for discussion. It was just, I just, I just wanted to inform you that this is going to happen. No, 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 this is not the way it works, which is really cool. Uh, but again, in order to uh, actually have even the shy and introverted associates to fully use this, it needs training because there are some people that just don't, uh, you know, that just don't naturally go and there, say their opinion especially if these discussions are live, like people are a lot more vocal by uh, emails than they are vocal like uh, when talking in person. So basically like you need to um, train people that if they want their voice to be heard, they need to speak. You know, it sounds again like a, like a huge cliche and it sounds really straightforward, but in the real life it's not. Um, we are trying to also, um, you know, promote like uh, anything where we feel that there's still deficiency of uh, people uh, being part of, of open source community or being part of, uh, of Red Hat or Red Hat's colleagues, clients, collaborators, like online. Uh, we are promoting women, women in open source. Um, 
we are having like different communities of people that have different uh you know that have the same same type of interests or same type of background like uh Hispanic community in the US or Afro community. Uh, so we are trying to get them, their, let their voice heard and let their experience to be shared with the rest of, uh, rest of Red Hatters. Um, I was talking already about the openness in communication, but uh, as I said, like, it, it requires training. I had once like talk with one of the, our very junior manager and he said, I told to my team that if they encounter any problem, that my door is always open and they can come to me and tell me that uh, there is a problem and we're gonna solve it. And I was like, and what happened? And he said like, nobody came. And I was like, Does this, do you think that this means that there is not a problem? And he was like, yeah, because like they can come. I was, no, <laughs> like he had already like various people leaving his team, but they just didn't came, you know, like uh, it's, it's the proactive approach that makes the culture like more inclusive. Um, as we are growing, like, you know, that Red Hat, like in Brno 10 years ago, it was 100, 100 persons, like now it's in Czech Republic, like over 1,000. So during this like very high speed growth, uh, we are trying to, um, it's getting more complex to preserve this inclusiveness and this possibility of open communication, but we are trying to do our best, you know, all hands calls, meetings, question answers calls with, uh, with the top management in, uh, uh, with the top management in the US, uh, where you can ask like anything that you find interesting, even uh, last time, like the, like one of the highest voted question was whether hot dog is sandwich. So basically, you know, like asking whatever, whatever you want to. I think the final voting was that hot dog is sandwich, but uh, stuff like that. And also like, you know, trying to have this proactive outreach to actually make sure that everybody who has something to say is able to say it like by some, some way or another. As to the events, activities and program that we are supporting, like we are supporting like uh, as much as possible as you know, like here presented Django Girls by ladies, like the, the events uh, are usually, usually if they like in Czech Republic or in Slovak Republic, are, we are trying to support events like this. Uh, um, financially also by providing sometimes mentors and are encouraging our uh, employees to get involved. We've got a lot of visits from students from high schools and universities uh, in, in Red Hat Brno. It's actually, it's actually pretty funny because there are some, like the uh, colleague that, that is taking care of this, he usually sends like a warning, like that fourth floor, there will be like 30 girls from the, <laughs> from the, from Brno high schools, you know, like coming to visit to the fourth floor so that everybody knows that, uh, you know, uh, that this is gonna happen and maybe, you know, like make, themselves a bit more decent than usually, or like, I don't know, like why he's sending it, but it's definitely funny when you come to your office and there is like a, you know, 30 girls standing and listening to, uh, listening to information like what type of software is produced in this area. We are trying to, to promote like, uh, we, are have, we are doing heavily, uh, last uh, two quarters, I was working heavily to improve the life of our expats in Brno because as I said, it's like 20% of employees that do not speak Czech or Slovak, you know, so basically life in Brno can be a little bit like more tricky for them than it would be for somebody coming from Slovakia, you understand everything, that's fine. For Czech people also it's fine. But if you come from Brazil and we've got like 30 associates from Brazil, like there's a lot of information that you need to know and uh, a lot of a lot more troubles than you that you that you need to deal with like when you are moving to Czech Republic so basically we had like uh, questionnaires people were telling us uh, what is the major problem and we were trying to address it uh, especially like the as I don't know like just for pure interest like the the most important problem was like to find a doctor that speaks English especially specialized doctor so we had like a lot of like running around asking, asking which doctor speaks like what language and like making a system for them uh, to actually help our associates to, to find their way, way around. Um, we are also trying to find some, some nice and uh, 
not command and control way how to promote a little bit more of English as standard working language in our offices. Even though like uh, if you are doing, uh, if you are working on a project, you usually speak in English, you usually write all documentation in English, but still uh, in the standard, in the standard chats in, uh, in the office, like it's still Czech, Czech and Slovak, Slovak are prevalent. So we are trying to find uh, some way how to naturally motivate people to speak a little bit more English so that their expat colleagues, expat colleagues can join, but not to do it by like a stupid way, like, you know, saying like everybody now speaks English and uh, if not, we're gonna, what we're gonna do, nothing, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the issue. So like we are trying to find some, some funny way how to motivate people. So if you've got any idea, like uh, I would be really happy to, <laughs> to obtain it from you. Uh, and of course, we are doing like cultural mashups, like uh, Global Village, and like exchanging information about like countries' foods and stuff like that. Like anything that can make us uh, closer. Well, so this is about the activities. If you would be more interested in that, like I, I will be uh, glad to provide you like our full account of, of activities that we are doing. But since the time is running, so. I was talking a lot about like what we are doing in Red Hat to be diverse and inclusive, but um, does it work? Did we really lead, reach the reach the target? You know, like to be to be catering for all sorts of talent. Um, well, partially, we are definitely definitely recognized as as leader in some of the initiatives in in diversity and inclusion. Um, like our associates actually actually like this initiative and appreciate it. And uh, from all the questioning that we had, 92% uh, of our of Brno associates they believe that Red Hat is diverse and inclusive company and they like it. Um, according to our survey, 77% um, uh, of of our associates agreed that diverse perspectives are valued at Red Hat that they feel comfortable sharing their uh, ideas, even if they are different from the rest of the colleagues. Um, so it somehow works. Still, um, there, is a lot, there, there is a lot to do, right? Like, um, uh, in order to expand, we are trying, like, uh, not, only, not only to invest into our internal, um, internal procedures and internal processes to get uh, to get more diversity and more inclusion to uh, our associates but as i said we are trying to empower women to actually join the communities like in open source empower like uh, people from countries like where they don't have the really they don't have the the empowerment like uh, from their education system to actually be able to join the open source family and it's it's long run, right? So it's still gonna take some time and uh, some effort, but it's definitely worth it. Like if you uh, if you're gonna be passing around Brno, like uh, and want to want to have a look at the <laughs> at the office and at the mashup that's happening there, just uh, you can definitely you can definitely come by. Like either my colleagues that you that you met yesterday and on Friday from recruitment gonna be. Uh, gonna welcome you or you can you can just just pop me up an email uh, and uh, like you know visiting the offices is possible definitely and uh, uh, asking questions is also possible to the extent it's manageable so basically uh, this is more or less like what I wanted to say if you have any questions like uh, please do not hesitate to uh, to ask now or uh, like I will be like uh, Two hours. I, I can stay like two hours more, so you can and it anywhere you can. You're gonna see me. You can ask me questions as well. And um, are there any questions? Yes, and there's a number of them actually. Uh, <laughs> so in the next five years, what percentage of employees do you expect to work for Red Hat remotely? Um, very tough question. I can't say for Red Hat globally. I can tell you that in Czech Republic. I expect it to be like something around 20%. It's not 20% now, it's like 10%. But uh, for, for Red Hat Czech, we expect that it might be up to 20% that's manageable and that's 
to be inclusive towards remote people, like it's more expensive and it's a little bit more difficult, for instance, for the managers. So like uh, we are not expecting like so big growth, but. You know, maybe someone who lives in a Koliba uh, up in the Tatras asked, asked that, so, um, so they can work from there. <laughs> Another one. What aspect of the culture do you like the most about Red Hat? Mm. I really appreciate the freedom and the fact that Red Hat is based on trust. So basically nobody's really hunting you down, you know, like uh, provide me your uh, comings and goings to the office or give me full account of what you are working on. Like genuinely we believe that uh, our associates are doing their best. We are trying to motivate them positively, but uh, we are not applying this type of command and control like that I uh, was really suffering from in my previous job. So I really like that. It doesn't work always, but I would say that like in the like very high majority of cases, like the freedom and trust that we are investing into, into our people actually pays, pays back that you don't need to do, stay like uh, at the entrance of the company waiting if everybody's there at nine. You know, like that's, that's very cool. Like I really like that, that people are responsible on their own and we trust them that they are going to stay, that, stay like this. Thank you. Um, how many Slovaks work at Red Hat Brno? And if I, if I may extend that question, uh, how many of them studied in Brno previously or how many just moved over? I would say that the majority of the Slovaks that are working in uh, Red Hat Brno, they actually studied there. Uh, but, and I think that it was something like 25% of the total population in Czech Republic that are Slovak. But I don't really, I don't really like, you know, get too much in these statistics because it's just, uh, <laughs> I just feel very Czechoslovak myself, born in Czechoslovakia, yeah, so I, I, don't really, I don't really differentiate there. Another question is kind of related to that, uh, and it asks, if someone wanted to do a diploma thesis in cooperation with Red Hat, how would that work? Um, you, just, you just write me an email and I will get you in touch with the right person. That's the easiest way. Like we are, uh, we've got like a huge list of like all the possible topics for diploma thesis. If you have like your idea, it's fine. The only thing is that I, I would need to get you in touch with somebody who can, who can be, you know, who can discuss like pro this idea with you. If you uh, want to pick idea that would, be, that would be good for Red Hat, like there are people coming that they want to do their diploma thesis with Red Hat, but they don't have like any real preference for the topic, it's also fine. We've got a list of internal topics that we would like to work on uh, with, with students. So just send me email and it's, uh, I will contact you with the right person inside and uh, just fine. And as a follow-up question, the list that you mentioned, you know, with the, with the possible topics for theses, is that published somewhere or is it available? Does someone need to get in touch with you or is it on the web? I think it's not, it's not, it's not secret, but I don't have, but I don't know by heart the link, like it's probably published somewhere. But uh, as I said, like there is a, there is a coordinator for, for students and I can get you uh, in touch with him and uh, you can discuss whatever whatever are your preferences for diploma thesis, and he will probably provide you the right link. Thank you. Is there a Czech language course for foreigners? Yes, a lot of these. Uh, recently, based on demand, we also started classes for foreigners that want to pass the exam to get citizenship, which is like more intense Czech language course, because like uh, one thing is to be able to live in Brno and have like uh, answers for the most basic life situations, but uh, the other thing is to pass as, as the, the citizenship uh, exam, which is uh, which requires like B1 level. But we have both of it. What is the third largest nationality in Red Hat Brno? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Like it's it's Sunday morning, you know. Uh, but I would say uh, I would say it's uh, it's Ukrainian. Like we have a lot of associates from Ukraine and we've got a lot of associates from Russia. So I think these two will be competing. Again, uh, I don't differentiate that much between the like Russian speaking group because uh, like they genuinely hang together like based on the fact that all of them speak Russian even though their first language would be different. So, uh, but I think it's either Ukraine or Russia, like the, the third largest. Mm -hmm. 
Um, how is Red Hat uh, in the Czech Republic similar, and how is it different from Red Hat US in terms of diversity? Any statistics or some observations? Well, the ob observation is obviously that um, Red Hat uh, US would be definitely more colorful, right? Like there are people from like the whole world. They are also like uh, a lot more um, involved in diversity actions as such. In Czech Republic, a couple of years ago, it was not even a topic. It starts to be a topic now, but still, as I said, like uh, we are like mostly 80% is either 80% of Red Hat Czech is either Czechs or Slovaks, uh, which wouldn't be the same in Red Hat US. Like there would be a lot more different nationalities. Um, and uh, their approach to diversity and inclusion is a little bit different because they because of all these types of nationalities and uh, groups. For instance, like the Afro-Hispanic minority in Brno is not very active because there's none, right? So basically, like you know, they've got a lot more diverse groups, whereas we are like more homogeneous. Like that's given by the fact that we are in Central Europe and not uh, in. Uh, Raleigh or Westford in, in the US.